Hey guys, Rob Murphy from Holistic Healing Choices here. Now today, I thought doing something a little bit different, we're going to have a look at the Reddit or subreddit self-help. Now, anything I say here is completely my own opinion. I haven't studied psychology, whatever, 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 but it's just something for us to have a look at and maybe open up for discussion about what you would do in this situation as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Have a look through, have a bit of a talk about our self-help. So the first one, why do I get very excited about starting a creative project, but as soon as I sit down to do it, I just don't want to do it anymore. Now, if you've ever experienced something like that, that one's, um, yeah, that one's pretty huge. Uh, what do they say here? I've got so much creative energy and I think that my life will improve uh, if I used it. But I keep facing this wall every time. Is it because I'm out of practice and I know that what I'll produce won't be anything like what is in my head? Is it laziness? Is it internet addiction or distraction? Would love some help on this. Anyone else experienced this before? Or do you know a better sub to ask it in? So, this is quite a common issue in most ways. Like, it's a a bit of an option paralysis or the it's not going to be how I want it to be why bother it's too hard I can't this is self-doubt once again or self-sabotaging sort of behaviors coming back in and this is so common um, and it's a lack of commitment for whatever reason yeah, this person, they, as soon as they sit down to do it, they just don't want to do it anymore. And I doubt that they're really committed to doing it, to changing, to getting out of the comfort zone, to doing whatever this project is that they want to do. So my suggestion to this person would be to just do it, commit, get into it. Force yourself to do it initially. Now, when I say force yourself, don't make it crap to start with but just get there start all you need to do is to start and then once you get into it it's no longer such a chore to start it but it's got to take that commitment now commitment equals pleasure hesitation like this equals pain so the more they roll about it the more they're beating themselves up about what they're not doing so, reading some of the comments, I had the same issues. Uh, many factors that it can affect, stress, problems in a relationship or not having it, family, job. First, it's better to define what the problem is hiding or where the problem is hiding and later you'll know where to dig. I mean, what you have to improve. So, based on what they described, they're ambitious, yep, cool. Have a lot of ideas. So, these people are very similar. Uh, Make a plan with baby steps. Good. <laughs> Something to start with. Set deadlines. Start working on the project. Yep, cool. Reward yourself for completing the task. Yeah, another good one. Another good incentive. So once I do this, I'll do whatever. I'll go see a movie or whatever it is that you reward yourself with. Talk to good friends. The more you put an idea out there, the more it's actioned upon. So your friends can then help keep you accountable for that as well. So they can ask you, are you doing this? Have you been doing that project? Believe in your idea. Self-discipline. Absolutely. As I was just saying there. I think the reason is that your ideas could be greater than your skills. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to insult you. Yep. Had the same idea uh, with drawing. I would imagine the final piece, but when I'd start drawing, it wouldn't be that great on paper since I didn't have enough skills. Yep. So practice with little things. And I mean that always comes into it as well. Write down your ideas. Once again, speak of small mini projects. So that's going back to the baby steps. Uh, seeing that final product give you motivation. Yep. That's fair enough. Uh, time after time, check in your big ideas. Yeah, okay. That's a good one. So start working on the small ideas, but then see how they're adding up to that bigger picture there as well. 
all excellent suggestions for this one. Okay, self-hatred after exercise. Now that's, that's a pretty big one, that's, wow. Pretty much what the title says, I've been trying to get healthier by cutting down how much I eat and going to work out, but every single workout makes me feel miserable. And not just in a my legs hurt kind of way, so not just physical pain. It's a genuine plume of self-loathing. I'm not sure what causes it, because the pain doesn't bother me. If anything, the pain afterwards makes me feel better, as if I'm getting what I deserve. Wow. I think it may be a kind of self-loathing based on pre-existing depression and anxiety, but I'm no expert. I feel as if I'm not worthy of food, sleep, happiness, or life after working out. Excuse me. Especially if the workout had been particularly difficult to accomplish. Can anyone relate or offer advice? Okay, too little, didn't read. Uh, I hate myself after exercising and I don't know why. Help. There's a lot to unpack here. This one, wow. This person needs a lot of help in a lot of areas, not just after exercise. This is a lot of self-worth issues. Like, putting yourself through pain because that's what you deserve. That's... After exercise, you should be ecstatic. You should be so joyed in what you're doing. God. Wow. Okay. Top comment here is drinking a ton of water, eating foods with good nutrition, sleeping enough, and distracting yourself. Okay. Basically, I'm kind of like a toddler. Uh, negative or crabby. My body is slightly off. Okay. Like a sore. Uh. Yeah. Doing something you can. Distracting yourself works, but only for a little bit of time. But once you get used to doing whatever it is, say, what have they got here? Watching TV, reading or something to take their mind off it. You're going to get past that and you're going to get bored once again. And you're going to start cycling with these sorts. But, yeah, so much. That feeling worthy of food, help, sleep, happiness, and life after working out. Like, you need to address this bit first. And that's it. You need to get out of this rut. Start thinking, like, look at the improvements that you're making to yourself. How much weight you're losing. How toned you're getting. How much more you can now do from exercise. You, an exercise itself should release endorphins and happy feelings. Or a feeling, at least, of accomplishment. That you've done what it is that you set out to do with that exercise. Now, I've lived in that headspace. Is this the original person? No. I've lived in that headspace for so long and I'm sorry your experience pain is similar. I'm a mother now, so I knew I couldn't risk living the same way and talk to my doctor. Okay, so this person's gone on to antidepressants, which in this case could be a good option until you get past that stage of hating yourself. Um, and that self-loathing until you can look in the mirror and actually say you know without ego without anything I love my body I love my life I am happy and then start to wean yourself off like obviously with your doctor support I mean I am against antidepressants in a way that I see them as a band-aid like as soon as you rip it off if you've made no changes to yourself all that stuff just keeps flooding back in and will come back in and they don't solve anything is my point they're like a band-aid you're on them you feel good excellent you're off them everything comes back maybe even tenfold than it was before but if you need them they're great a band-aid will stop the bleed but it's up to you and your natural body responses to you know clog that wound help that wound clean that wound yourself so to speak in that metaphor so for this person I would say go to your doctor go see a psychiatrist get the help you need to be that little bit happier because god that's that's a huge one like for me exercise is great I love love doing weights that feeling afterwards that 
I love that sore feeling afterwards. You're just like, yeah, I've been using my body the way I should be using it. I've accomplished something. So I'm going to leave that one with seek professional help as soon as possible. Wow. Okay, and last one for this video here. How can I turn despair to motivation? Hi, I'm 16 year old gay who feels like his life isn't going in the best direction it should. So actually, I've been thinking about it for days, maybe even a week. I'm just not satisfied at all with my life. I feel so pathetic. So let me tell you what happened. So I have social anxiety. Some really hard one. I can't talk in real life with most people who are around my age, so therefore I don't have friends in real life at all. My only friends are online, but it's not even close to friends in real world. I'm going to a psychologist and it helped me, but now I can't really continue. Okay, I wonder why that is. I feel blocked. Not only I have no chance to meet people around my age, because it's summer vacation, okay, American. Uh, the only people I can meet with are people in a small town, but I hate each of them, and I can't stand them anymore. And like, I miss having people around my age to meet. Uh, I hate my social anxiety so much, and I feel like I'm really friendly. All I do most of the day is chatting with people over the internet, but I can't even be close to the feeling of having friends in real life. I like meeting new people so much, and I love people, but I can't have any of that love back to me because of my anxiety. So I miss having people in my life, and also having friends. More than, more than it, I feel I really need love. Yes, I hate to talk about it, but I look bad. My personality is bad and my social anxiety is bad. So I love my standards in guys to around a zero. So I can just have someone to love who loves me back. But as you may already understand, it doesn't work. I used to like the fact that my standards are so low, but I realize that I hate it. I hate the fact I have to lower my standards. And I hate the fact that I'll never get to have a boyfriend who is much, much higher than my standards. Well, okay, get to that bit in a sec. And that's only if I'll ever have one. As it seems now, I'll never have a boyfriend and it doesn't seem to change. I'm so much better online than in real life. Two people have already asked me out. Um, I rejected both because they live abroad and I can't have a relationship online. That's my limit. That's a good limit to have. Uh, I need someone to really be able to hug me who isn't my blanket. I can't have it anymore. I feel so lonely. Uh, but I want to turn this despair into motivation. But I don't feel like I can. So that's why I'm here. Can someone help me turn this despair into motivation? Wow, this one's another huge one. Especially being 16. Hormones raging. Like, and it's a hard time for any kid. And especially one that's gay and feels as though their life isn't going the direction it should. Because <sighs> there are so many things placed on kids, teenagers, of where they should be going. They should be aiming for that success, that whatever. <sighs> Personally, I don't know what it's like to be going through it as a homosexual. Um, because, well, I'm into women. I'm quite comfortable with my heterosexuality. Um, so going through school, I don't know. I did go through school with guys that you knew would turn out gay. Um, whether they admitted to themselves at school or not, uh, I can't even remember, to be honest. Um, so, but they were a lot more confident in themselves than this person seems to be. Now, where was it? All of these beliefs here. I'll never have a boyfriend who is much higher than my standards. And that's only if I'll ever have one. Yeah, and I'll never have a boyfriend. And two, in this... You shouldn't have to put... Or... Self-love and everything onto someone else. Now, I told my fiancé this... A long time ago, when we first started... Uh, we were a couple months into the relationship. I told her, I don't need your love, but I want it. So I want 
her to love me, rather than needing it. So, it seems this person really needs that other person for them to feel whole. You should feel whole all by yourself. Like, the other person just adds to your life, not completes it, so to speak. Now, I know I'm speaking there just from my personal experience, but be it gay, straight, whatever, you need to be happy with yourself. You need to, like this person, I think it's a lot about direction and as well as self-esteem with they said something about looks. I feel so pathetic, that line in there. Like, ugh, that's even hard just to say. Um, for this person, I would say, if at all possible, get out and mingle with groups. I'd be really interested to see why they can't really continue with their psychologist. Because that seems to be what would help them the most in this situation. It's something they need to get out. They need to see a different point of view. They need... It's. I feel, even if someone said, you're really good at X, Y, and Z, they perfectly see reasons as to why they're not as good as X, Y, and Z, but they're really also bad at A, B, and C. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm really friendly in this line here, but my personality is bad. So, they're just... Yeah, running around. It's, um, I've been there. I wasn't the most confident, happy 16-year-old either. Um, online stuff wasn't as accessible or there back when I was 16. Uh, but, you know, stop using this as an escape. I like that they're not going to delve into an online relationship. That is a positive step forward in my opinion for them. But let's have a look and see what the comments have got there. Uh, Gay for 20 years, came out at 16, before the internet was what it is now. Uh, and a part of the world that was really in gay, yeah, so <laughs> would have been tough. Yeah, okay. And that is a bit of a stigma that you can still see. Like, I know I catch myself using words to being, you know, country born, Australian, red blooded male sort of thing. That stuff is gay and using it in a bad way. Now, I have absolutely no problem with homosexual people. Like, you gay, you gay, cool. Just don't crack onto me, sort of thing. Then we might have a bit of a problem. If you don't respect my boundaries. That's what I'm saying there. Um, yeah, see, barely see gay relationships or families or success stories in the media. Now, it, it is getting a lot better, I will say that. I've noticed a lot more of that um, same-sex relationships, all that sort of stuff, um, being more widely accepted. Like here in Australia too, we've got gay marriage now, which is huge, but I mean still, <laughs> there are so many people calling it, call it something else. I can't see why they should get married. And, like those really old uh, generations coming through. And it's like love is love, but anyway, getting back to this person. Yeah, and what do you have to work towards? That's a really good point. And there are the loud homophobic voices calling you names and telling you there's something wrong with you. Let me save you years of therapy. Believe me, all of this takes a toll on your self-esteem, yes. Makes you feel pathetic. Good using that word back to that person's original thing. It makes you lower your standards in every relationship in your life. Yep. So you start hanging around with the wrong sort of people. It makes you hate yourself. This is real and you are feeling the symptoms. So this person absolutely gets it. Um, jumpsuit captain, well done for this response. It's easy to understand and go into this despair. This cultural reality is something that is changing around for long enough. Da, da, da. I took a few different paths to use my despair as fuel in life. Personally, I became very good at school, but you could be good at anything, video games, hobbies, sports, etc. 
Essentially, I needed to be good at something so that I could feel satisfaction instead of despair. And that's really just masking it. Essentially, um, so personally I became very good at school. Learning is, learning is lifelong and I know very well how to learn. And I take great joy in educating myself, it's consuming. And getting consumed and distracted in a healthy way is a great way to stop feeling sad. Good. So, this person has found something to delve into. Like I was saying, join a community group sort of thing. So, uh, there was one on here that I was looking at where someone joined a mountain, mountain biking uh, thing and it was enough to get them out of their depression, get them out of their comfort zone, get them meeting new people, changing their environment, which is a big thing too. So maybe this person needs to wait a couple of years and move out of that small town, move to somewhere more opening, inviting of them and their circumstances. Now uh, community, yep, like we were just saying, when I found the gay community, and not who are activists, not just party people, and yeah, every community has people in it that you will not like, your butt heads or whatever. Uh, but for the most part, finding a community with affinity I shared, like the passion to make positive change for gay people, was exactly what I needed to have the social life I craved. But any community will do. Any real life group of people who are interested in things that interest you will provide you with a cool group of folks to hang out with and maybe even date. Social anxiety, and it's, yeah, walking into a community of people. And that that's that block, that self-limiting sort of thing that you put there. While it doesn't seem self-limiting, it, it is. At the end of the day, it is just yourself stopping you from doing it. Once you push yourself out there, it's really not that bad. And if you continue to do it, it just becomes your new normal. But actually, you do just have to show up. Just show up and be yourself. You now, people are going to accept you for whatever. And uh, in society itself, we have to let go of this thing that people won't like me. I mean, I too suffer from a little bit of that. And it does stop you from putting yourself out there in whatever way and showing up. Most important part is figuring out how to love myself. If you don't love yourself, how can you expect anyone else to? What I was talking about before there, I don't need my fiance's love, but I want it. So, I love myself. I'm comfortable with myself. I know who I am. And this person needs to do that too. And lowering your standards, don't drop your standards for anyone else. It's... Uh, it ends up becoming that battered wife syndrome, you know, becomes what you're used to. Once you lower that down, you, yeah, you keep going back to that because that's where you feel this feeling of love or whatever. It's dangerous. Summer job if you don't have the money backpacking, if you don't <laughs> get off the other, <laughs> wow, that's, um, okay. Um, and alone, do the reflection work, so it takes to love yourself, journaling, uh, meditating, uh, yoga, moving your body, moving the physical manifestation of issues out of you, but just try something. Um, if you can't go back to that psychologist, go to another one. Uh, there are so many, so many things that you can do for yourself. If you're experiencing any issues similar to this at all, like I mean, at the end of the day, all of these issues are in us. Uh, we create them for ourselves for whatever reason. Like for this person, maybe they feel scared. Maybe somewhere along the line, their parents or a role model has mentioned that gay is not okay. So on comes the self-loathing. But anyway guys, once again these are just my opinions on it, reading through the comments agreeing with whatever else it is there too. So my main message here is seek help. If you're in a dilemma like this, some mental um, issue that's stopping you, something where 
you're getting further and further away from where you actually want to be, seek help. Talk to friends. Have someone there to keep you accountable. Seek professional help. You know, you may not want to be on antidepressants for the rest of your life, but they can help in the short term to get you out of there while you seek and make those changes that you need to make. But anyway, guys, that is a look at our self-help. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to see more of this, let me know. Let me know if you want to see more people talking about these sort of things uh, on here. But anyway, guys, as always, I'm Rob Murphy, and I will see you in the next video.